Hey, this is Steve with Dabble Lab, and in this video, I am going to be diving into GPT-3 and OpenAI's new API that is still in private beta, but I just got an invite yesterday, and I'm super excited about that. I've been following the online buzz and uh, looking forward to seeing if um, all of the, uh, the, the the claims were were true, and uh, happily they are. It's super, super uh, cool and interesting. Um, let me just dive in and, and just show you kind of, I'm logged into the developer console right now, and there, there there's basically three things that you can do with the API uh, or with the GPT-3 behind the API, I suppose. Um, text generation, semantic search, and text classification. So when I got in here, the first thing that I thought was, um, well, if it can generate text and do search, maybe it can teach me more about what GPT-3 is all about. And so I started there. I went to the playground here, and um, I started with uh, a, a question, thinking, you know, sem semantic search, I can probably search for some of the questions that I have about this right away. Um, I probably should have just gone into the documentation first, but this seemed like it would be more fun. So the first question that I started with is, um, what is GPT-3 from uh, OpenAI? And, um, and I hit submit. And I, I've done this a few times. The response that you get back varies a little bit each time. And so this response says GPT, GPT-3 is an improvement over GPT-2, the first generation of the generative uh, adversarial network. It's trained using more data and offers improved results in many cases. The researchers trained it on a large data set and the architecture of GPT-3 allows it to generate more complex and I can submit again to get more uh, responses back. In this case here it says images and notice what's happening here. It is using what it sees as a pattern that starts with a question to continue by prompting or creating another question. And this question is why is it important? And uh, in many ways, GT GPT-3 is a leap forward in technology. And so if, if I just send this back to the API a couple more times, it's going to continue just based on that, asking more questions about um, GPT-3, which is really, um, really pretty interesting. So I went through and, and just used this to start wrapping my head around GPT-3, uh, and, and uh, it was really um, pretty cool to, uh, to see how easy it was. The next part that I dived into was this on the right hand side, there's a bunch of settings here. And uh, this one is sort of self-explanatory. The response length is how much text you're gonna get back when you submit. They refer to this as a prompt, like a text prompt. And then the, the, the temperature, this is really interesting here. Um, so the temperature is controls how deterministic the model is going to be with its response. And um, I guess a, another way of saying it would be like subjective versus objective, like on the zero end, this is extremely objective, so very deterministic. And on this end, it's extremely subjective, so creative. So let me just give you an example. So same thing, same question prompt, uh, but this time I've got the temperature turned up all the way to one. And if I send this to the API, I get something that's pretty different. So in this case here, uh, one of the latest AI ride sharing systems, GPT-3, uses co-training co to preserve the flexibility of human driving. So this is, I, I believe, essentially made up. Uh, and um, so there you get sort of the, the creativity factor in here. But if I slide this to the other end and just start with something that's, I guess, extremely objective or deterministic, I suppose, and send this to the API, I get something that's very specific back. GPT-3 is a new language model that's able to generate text that is in indistinguishable from human written text. Um, and so just with this, you, you've got a lot of control. And, and one of the things that I noticed like right off the bat is 
this is just so much easier than working with anything else out there that I'm aware of. And so I, I see this as something that's going to really, really democratize um, natural language processing solutions. I could see pretty much anybody getting in here with an idea and, and quickly being able to, uh, to, to, to turn that into a, an app. And uh, I'm, that's, I'm going to do that on a follow on video. And I've started working on a, an Alexa skill that's going to use GPT-3 on the back end to see how that goes. There are also um, a, a number of examples in here that just highlight the, the, the flexibility of this API. This is kind of a, like a Swiss army knife of language processing APIs. This one API can do everything from like, uh, I don't know, like could certainly do like sentiment analysis or classification um, uh, parsing unstructured data. If you've done this with another NLU platform, you've probably provided lots of samples and created uh, interaction models and built the, uh, um, the, the, the models with training data to, to make it work. But with this here, I've not built any models or done anything. Uh, with this example, there's just some, some, some text up here and then some instructions here and then, uh, yeah, some examples of what the results should look like. And if we send this to the API, send that down here, you can see that it parses the values out. So for like entity extraction and things like that, uh, just, you know, this is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Oh, uh, another example that is, um, oh, let me I'll just do one from scratch because it's really easy to use i'll do like a, a classification i'll do like a um, All right, so in this example here, I've got um, my, my prompts, which are in a pattern. And you can also control sort of how the text gets parsed with some of these settings over here. So like this one here, um, if to, to start my next sample in the sequence, I've got two line returns and then this like object here. So I'll just say object and then colon. And this setting is basically going to provide some instructions about how my text is structured. And so then if I send this back to the API, I don't know where this is coming from, but this here, you can see the first responses are pear, a pear is green, uh, a lemon is yellow, and an orange is orange. And Perl lists are also objects. This may be constructed. I, I think it's talking about the like the programming language Perl. Uh, I don't know where that's coming from, but that's kind of kind of interesting. And um, yeah, so I'm going to uh, there's like translation. Uh, Translate here from English to French. Uh, again, it's like the Swiss army knife of language processing APIs. It's really cool. As I dive into it deeper, I'll share more. But if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those and I will answer those um, as quickly and to the best of my ability as possible. If you found this helpful or you would like to see more stuff on the Open AI API or GPT-3, please let me know in the comments. Not sure um, if, uh, if this is something that you would like to learn more about. Uh, I'm going to dive into it either way, but I would love to hear what you think. Thanks so much.